So, if you're like me, the latest Nvidia release of graphics cards, known as the 4000 series, has left you stumped. Everybody is saying all these different things and you don't know what is going on. By the end of this video, we're going to clear up all that confusion surrounding Nvidia's 4000 series of graphics cards. Before we get started, my name is Josh, and if you like keeping up to date with the latest tech, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ding that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. Nvidia's 4000 series was announced recently, and the media has been in a frenzy trying to decipher what is going on. This has led to a massive amount of speculation. So what do we know? Well, we know for a fact that Nvidia has renounced three 4000 series GPUs, being the 4090, the 4080 16GB and the 4080 12GB. There is no news yet on any cards in the 70 or 60 families. We also have pricing information which puts the flagship 4090 at $1599 USD, for the 4080 16GB at $1199 and the 12GB at $899, which is $2350, $1750 and $1350 for my Australian friends. This is definitely a lot of money, but fairly similar to the 3000 series with only the 4090 having a price increase until you look further. There have been numerous publications that have stated something the lines of, where we really start to run into trouble is as we make our way down to the 4080 and the um, 4080 12 gig, which is, as far as I can tell, not a 4080 or even necessarily a 70 class card at all. So let's explore that. In my opinion, I believe a lot of these publications are looking at certain specifications and comparing them to the previous generation and drawing conclusions from there. But you have to remember to look at the card holistically. So what I believe is causing people to think that these cards are actually a step down than what is advertised is the memory bus. If we look at the latest offerings, the 4090 has a 384-bit bus which is on par to the 3090. The 4080 16GB has a 256-bit bus, which is on part of the 3070, 3070 Ti, but also the 3060 Ti. And finally, the 4080 12GB can be seen with a 192-bit bus, which puts it on par with the 3060. Okay, maybe there is something here. Supporting this theory also is the GDDR6 memory that was haloed. Well, the 80 class and above products in the previous generation also used this memory technology also with greater bus speeds. The one redeeming factor that we can see with the memory is that speeds on the 4000 series are faster across the board. However, just because the clock speed is faster, that doesn't mean the memory is actually faster. We saw that the 3090 and 4090 were on par with their specs, so you could expect a minor generational improvement in its performance. As you can see from the table, this is the case. Memory speed improved from 936.2 gigabytes per second on the 3090 to 1018 gigabytes per second on the 4090. However, the story changes drastically when it comes to the 80 class offerings. For the 4080 16 gig, we can see that it has a memory speed of 735.7 gigabytes per second, which is a marginal improvement over the 3080 10 gig. Okay, that's not too bad, it's only one step down from the card it was replacing, the 3080 12GB at 912.4GB per second. Moving on to the 4080 12GB, it has a memory speed of 503.8GB per second, which is a marginal improvement over the 3070 and 3060 Ti, which come in at 448GB per second. Where this becomes more interesting is if you compare it to a generation back again to the 2080, which also has the same effective memory speed of 448 gigabytes per second. It isn't really in the scope of this video to detail how we got these results because it is a massive undertaking, but in the article linked below, you can find out exactly how we came to this conclusion. And I want to give a shout out to Tech Power Up for providing a lot of this data. So what does this mean? Going back to the Linus quote, where he said that may not even be a 70 class offering. Personally, I believe there is arguments to be made on both sides, either for a 70 or a 60 class card. However, what I can say is that the 4080 12 gig is not an 80 class offering. I would argue that the 4080 16 gig is still technically an 80 class offering based on the previous data, but it is definitely a weaker offering than the equivalent card from the previous generation. As for other specs in these cards, the 4090 and 4080 16 gig have minor improvements again when compared to the cards they are replacing. However, 
The story gets even more interesting again when you come to that 40, 80, 12 gig. We can see that CUDA cores have increased, but when we look at tensor cores and RT cores, when compared to the 30, 80, 10 gig, we can see that they have gone down from 272 to 240 and 68 to 60 respectively. Hi everyone, editing Josh here. I've just noticed that I got this part wrong in the video whilst editing it. So uh, the CUDA cores have actually gone down as well. Just a slight correction there, hope that clears it up. Which places this card between the 3070 and 3080. This extra bit of context makes me more confident in thinking that this card was originally targeted to be a 70 class card. So why has Nvidia done this? Now I have to preface this section of the video with this is entirely speculation and I do not know why Nvidia has done this, but we can look at some of the things that have come up in the news and media and draw some conclusions from there. The first potential reason could be that Nvidia has had some troubles manufacturing these cards. We have to remember that Lovelace is a new process node based off TSMC's 4 nanometer architecture, and when tech is this brand new, there can be issues. It may be entirely possible that Nvidia wanted the 4080 12GB to be a true 80 class card, but with the new manufacturing process, it just couldn't meet the specifications. So they bin the cards lower in terms of their specifications. I would argue that this isn't the case. If this were true, I feel that Nvidia would do the opposite and badge this card as a 4070 and let their customers potentially have more performance rather than badge the card as an 80 class card and have their customers walking away with less performance. We also know that there has been a global chip shortage for years and sourcing components has been extremely difficult. Another reason, which to be fair, sounds like a bit of a conspiracy, but could have some weight, is that Nvidia has excess 3000 series stock that they want to get rid of. It is well known that throughout the 3000 series generation, it was extremely difficult to get a card, especially for a good price. The chip shortage, along with the crypto mining boom, made graphics cards a very hot product. Nvidia was churning out as many cards as they could to sell to every customer that wanted one. However, that has ceased now, but it takes a lot longer to turn off a manufacturing plant than it does for the cryptocurrency market to crash. So, because of this, Nvidia could have an extreme number of 3000 series cards that they want to sell alongside the 4000 series without cannibalizing either lineup. Finally, and this is the most cynical reason, Nvidia just straight up has not had much competition recently. It has been many years since AMD has had a GPU that was able to take the paramount spot in a generation, and Nvidia has capitalized on that. Intel did the same thing back before the launch of AMD's Ryzen CPUs. We received generation after generation of quad-core, somewhat mediocre processors until AMD said no and brought out the processors with larger core counts. I'd personally hoped that Intel would take on Nvidia this generation with their new GPUs, but it seems, at least at the time of writing this video, that this is not the case and they're sort of taking on the mid-range. So, if Nvidia has just become complacent because they don't need to churn out amazing graphic cards, all I can say is the competition in the market kind of let them. So does this make the 4000 series graphics cards bad? The short answer is no, definitely not. The longer answer is it depends on what you pay for them. Realistically, the price alone of these cards is going to prevent most of you from even considering one, especially seeing as you can build an entire system for the cost of one card. These cards do have performance improvements over the previous generation of cards, depending on which one you compare. These cards also have a suite of new features, including third generation RT cores, fourth generation tensor cores, DLS 3.0, and in the case of the 4080s, they do this all when consuming less power than the 3080s they replace. I suppose the final item to discuss is what order I would purchase these cards and my reasoning why. Now, this doesn't factor in price, it only factors in the specifications listed, and when you are shopping, you should definitely account for your specific market conditions. But here it is. This is how I would rate the cards on the market if I was purchasing one. Now, you may be thinking that the 4000 series is a lot higher on the list than you expected, and considering what we just discussed, realistically, you are right. The reason is that the 4000 series is on a new architecture and even though certain graphics cards may have less cores or slower memory or a narrower bus, 
That doesn't change the fact that the 4000 series has a new generation of cores and a new architecture. You must remember that Nvidia would not be releasing these cards unless they were faster. But let's look at some specifics. We started with the 4090, standard as the flagship of the latest generation, and we didn't see any abnormalities in our research. Next, we went with the 3090 Ti, as it is the flagship of the last generation, supporting most of the features and performance. Following this, we have the 4080 16GB, which has less cores and slower memory than the following 3090, but you have to remember the actual GPU performance, and as you can see from Tech Power Up's research, the 4090 16GB is faster than the 3090. However, if you do need 24GB of video RAM, because you play a lot of games with high quality textures, then that is something that you'll have to take into consideration. Next, we place the 3080 Ti above the 4080 12GB due to raw graphics performance, then the 3080 12 and 10GB, following then is the 3070 Ti, 3070, 3060 Ti before the 2080 which beat the 3060 in raw performance. This is another one you may want to take with a grain of salt as the 2080 came out in September of 2018, making it a 4 year old card with the feature set to match. That's it, that's my thoughts on Nvidia's new 4000 series of graphics cards, and I hope I was able to clear up some confusion for you. Please don't forget to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment if you have anything you want to say about this video, share this video if you think someone else would enjoy it, and as always, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.